Digital Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the music, movies, and culture of Generation X. What is up, Slackers? And welcome to another episode of the Stuck in the Middle Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Eck. And you might be asking yourself, self, why does he sound like that? Well, I'll tell you why. Imagine you're doing some research online, some genealogical research, and you start ruminating on your own, your own existence, your own birth, your own conception. And you say to yourself, self, if I was born in 1974, that means that uh, some shenanigans were happening in 1973. And I know a lot of people, when they have special times with the ones that they love, they like to listen to music. So what were they listening to in 1973 that made people want to get it on? Well, what's interesting is one of those songs is, in fact, Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. So that's what this episode kind of started with. Started looking through the sounds of 1973. It was kind of interesting to me the songs of 1973 because it was a weird time in music. Let me give you a little little snippet. You have the number one song of 1973, Tony Orlando and Dawn with Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. Jim Croce with Bad Bad Leroy Brown Now, so far, you might be thinking, that's not enough to stoke the fires of love. Well, what about Killing Me Softly with his song by Roberta Flack? Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Touch Me in the Morning by Diana Ross. Now, not really a love song, but The Nights the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Vicki Lawrence. We have Me and Mrs. Jones by Billy Paul. Dobie Gray's Drift Away. Stevie Wonder, You Are the Sunshine of My Life. Sylvia Robinson with Pillow Talk. Stevie Wonder, Superstition. John Denver's with uh, Rocky Mountain High. Stuck in the Middle with You by Steeler's Wheel. Now, I'm just going through some of these songs, and one of the things that keeps coming up, I, I here we are, Diamond Girl by Seals and Crofts, the Doobie Brothers, Long Train Running. Now, all of this got me thinking about some of these songs are, in fact, what might be known as soft rock or even, that's right, Yacht Rock. So some of the artists that are on here don't necessarily fit directly into that category. So I had to do some research of what, in fact, is the definition of Yacht Rock. (coughs) And who, in fact, falls in this category. So as I'm looking at 1973, we have, you know, Paul McCartney and Wings. No. Stevie Wonder, no. The Carpenters, no. No. Although I think that's probably borderline. We have the Allman Brothers Band, etc., etc. Uh, David Bowie's Space Odyssey came out in 1973. The Temptations, Papa was Rolling Stone. But he- here's the thing. Steely Dan. I think they fall into the category of Yacht Rock. Chicago. I mentioned Seals and Croft. Now here's the thing. In general, I kind of, I think, hate Yacht Rock. And this all stems from a conversation I remember having 
many, many years ago. So this was probably mm, late 90s, maybe early 2000. And my wife and I, before we were married, had gone to either we were visiting out there. Well, anyway, she had a friend that she went to high school with, one of her best friends, who had actually moved out to Boston for a time. And we almost never saw her because she just got onto this whole life that she was living in, you know, good for her. But we were sitting in a restaurant, we were eating our dinner, and a song came on, and she said something to the effect of, oh, you must love this or whatever. I'm like, I don't know what you mean. I don't know this song. And she goes, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I've ever heard this song before. And her words, oh, that's bullshit. And I'm like, uh, aghast. I'm annoyed. I am, I'm offended. Yes, I'm a music guy, but song was not ringing a bell. That artist will be the last one that we talk about because that artist is in fact considered basically the artist of Yacht Rock. And I'll get into why I'd never heard the song before a little bit later. So how is this defined? Yacht Rock was originally known as the West Coast Sound or adult-oriented rock. It is a broad music style and aesthetic commonly associated with soft rock, one of the most commercially successful genres from the mid-1970s to the mid-1980s. <clears throat> Drawing on sources such as smooth soul, smooth jazz, R&B, and disco, common stylistic traits include high-quality production, clean vocals, and a focus on light, catchy melodies. Its name, coined in 2005 by the makers of the online video series Yacht Rock, was derived from its association with popular Southern Californian leisure activity of sailing. So I'll tell you this. I did have the opportunity a few times in my youth. My, uh, my stepdad worked for a marina, a landlocked marina. He still works for them. But basically, it was the people who would go down to the Connecticut shore would then, you know, bring their boats in either for maintenance or to get them wrapped for the winter. But they were also selling boats at the time, which means that you had the opportunity. He had the opportunity by being an employee to take out, you know, the, the test, test drives. So I got an opportunity to be around, you know, speed boats. And then my aunt's husband, my uncle, that's how that works. That's how marriage works. Um, he was a, an avid boater and had a uh, kind of an older wooden boat, but still a speed boat. You know, we'd go uh, uh, occasionally water skiing, those kind of things, right? So I'd always been around, if I was around a boat, it was a motorboat. And my my stepdad would call a sailboat a blowboat because you're waiting on the wind, right? And he was just never into the yachting culture, the you know, sailboat culture. So I've always been kind of, I don't want to say anti-sailing. If you enjoy sailing, go for it. But that's such a super upper middle class, if not upper class kind of endeavor. It's not a hobby I was ever really interested in. Anyway, so when I think of stuff like sailing, which we'll talk about sailing in just a moment, it was just not something that ever really Nothing I really ever gravitated to. Now, what's interesting is that some of the bands that are considered yacht rock, I find interesting because they talk about this soft rock, but also the smooth soul, smooth jazz. It's interesting what they include and what they exclude from what we would call blue-eyed soul. So one of the groups that we'll talk about a little bit later on in the list, I'm like, I have a hard time considering them yacht rock, although I can imagine a bunch of yuppies in the 70s and the 80s be like, this is my favorite band. And you kind of go, okay, I, I can see the association. But more often than not, I'm finding a lot of the bands on the list, not something that I would, um, you know, pop in and listen to anytime soon. While there is a whole section of them that are, I don't know, things I really like, which I also found a bit, Surprising, because some of the stuff that's on here, so here's a, a great 
So this is just Wikipedia. <coughs> um, comprehensively defining Yacht Rock remains difficult, despite agreement that its central elements are aspirational, but not luxurious, jaunty, but lonely, pained, but polished. Journalist Jack Seal stated that as in other micro genres, Certain albums of artists who are accepted as proponents are arbitrarily ruled in or out. For example, Michael Jackson's Thriller is accepted as Yacht Rock, but Fleetwood Mac's Rumors is not. I mean, okay, if you say so. I think one of the things that when we start talking about some things that are, um, excuse me, yeah, I've still got the cough, um, there's some stuff that is definitely harder guitar driven stuff, but they're also heavily, um, you know, working alongside synthesizers and organ. And I think that's part of the whole feel as well. You know, there are some who have said that certain things that are, are considered yacht rock again, shouldn't be like folk driven versus, you know, this kind of like soul. It's very interesting. It's a weird, weird no, oh, excuse me. I was actually thinking I was going to get through this tonight without any coughing, but here we are. Um, but they've disputed the use of the term as an umbrella for any song whose lyrics include nautical references. So, by the way, if you have a song about, you know, sailing the sea, doesn't mean that it's Yacht Rock. So, for example, Come Sail Away by Styx is not considered Yacht Rock. Okay, let's jump into the list. Now, this is not a comprehensive list. I took and picked and choose things that I was most familiar with. So again, this is stuff that was 70s through 80s. Some things I would have heard only as they're playing them on the radio years later, maybe with an AM transistor radio, listening to AM music, where a lot of this, you know, I, I was exposed to. Um, through the stuff that I do remember in the very latest 70s into the early to mid 80s. So again, there were some things I was surprised by how much I liked, but not all. So first and foremost, to me, the group that stands out right away is Captain Daryl Dragon. Yes, his real last name is Dragon and Tony Tennille, otherwise known as Captain and Tennille, who in 1979 had two huge hits. One is Love Will Keep Us Together. The other is Muskrat Love. No, I'm sorry. That was 77, 76, 77. And then Do That To Me One More Time was their big hit in 1979. I remember that being a new song. Captain Steel, Muskrat Love, awful. Awful. Like, it's terrible. So I listened to, you know, a bunch of the songs tonight going, oh, okay, right, here we are. But Love Will Keep Us Together, solid. Do That To Me One More Time is schmaltzy but the innuendo is clear so it's like holy cow tony tenille let's uh let's calm it down a little bit now many of the artists on here have multiple hits so it wasn't that they were one hit wonders but there is one song that falls clearly in this category that i had to include because i remember it and it makes me cringe to this day it made me cringe when i was a kid it makes me cringe today that is Sad Eyes by Robert John from 1979. I, it is the most uncomfortable song for me. I hear it and I just get this, this awful sense of dread. I can't explain it. There's a couple of songs from this era. Who knows? Childhood trauma, whatever it is. That song. Oh, gosh. I'm like, no, turn it off. Tur turn it off. It's awful. Awful. But another artist from the seventies that I've learned to love. And I think part of the reason that I was against it is only because I have some family members who just loved, loved this guy. And that is William Royce, Boz Skaggs, who in 1976 had two hits. One with the Lido shuffle. Sorry about Lido shuffle. I once had that song in my head for like one full calendar year. Every day, at some point or another, every day, could be at work, could be at home, could be right before I went to bed, I would get that chorus in my head. 
Lido. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That in my head. In my head for over a year. The other song is Lowdown. And, you know, you may not think about it right away, but those of you who know the song, it just has that, um, like that bass. He always got that great bass line, you know? Um, I start to get, a, 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 I guess, the the melody of it sometimes confused with um, some Michael McDonald stuff, right? But Lowdown, you go ahead, you hear that, you're like, that's what I'm talking about. That's some smooth shit right there. So Boss Gags, definitely Yacht Rock, but some good stuff. Now, the next one, so again, this this jazz thing, right? So we're talking about Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, who started the band Steely Dan. And like they came right out of the gate pretty strong. But in 1973, they had Do It Again and Reeling in the Years. And then they had Ricky Don't Lose That Number in 1974. So knowing that my mom is a big fan of Steely Dan, that might explain some things. But exceptional, exceptional musicianship. Never a huge fan of Donald Fagan's voice necessarily. There's something interesting about the tone, though. And Ricky Don't Lose That Number, that bass line is killer. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, oh my gosh. It's amazing. You know, my my brother-in-law, he loves Steely Dan. But he'll, he'll go off like on some tangent. Oh, those aren't even like the best records. You got to listen to them. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Hmm. I just know that they fall into this category. And it's just weird to me because, you know, something like Do It Again. I don't know. I, I feel like there's a... There's something about Steely Dan. There's a little bit of menace. I, I can't really explain it. It's something about Donald Fagan. There's definitely something dark. There's a dark twist. But then reeling in the years, you've been telling me you're a genius since you were 17, and all the years I've known you don't know what you mean. Burn. It's a burn. Um, but Steely Dan's an interesting band. I've never been able to just like sit down and listen to like a whole record. So I think that's something I'll need to do. <laughs> Oh, boy. So here's a guy who who clearly is trying to work out some issues via his music. So we're talking about Rupert Holmes, who is best known for 1979's Escape, the Pina Colada song. Which, depending on how you view it, is either a sweet, bittersweet, or awful song. Mm. Excuse me. It, it's a little bit of all of it. Because in theory, he's taking out a personal ad so that he can meet up with another woman who seems to have things in common with him, only to show up and find out the person he has the most in common with is his wife. And then his next biggest hit was in 1980, a song called Him. That basically starts out with this dude left his cigarettes. This other dude, him, left his cigarettes at his house because he's shacking up with Rupert Holmes' wife. And she forgot to hide his cigarettes when he left because he left without them. He forgot them. Like, how are we going to live with the situation? She's got to decide whether she's going to be with me or be with him. So Rupert Holmes, I've got to go into your biography. There seems to be some infidelity and some stories that you need to work out but holy cow dude but again yacht rock like a bunch of yuppies sitting around going yeah man put on some rupert holmes which is also interesting to me because the 70s and the 80s like there's like cocaine going on and like cocaine is like let's go fast so i wonder if that was the difference when like the hard rock kind of kicked back in again when people are like you know or disco i don't know it's strange, though. So the next band, I'm not going to spend any time on. And I'm sorry, because I know a lot of people are huge fans of this band to this day. They are either like one or two of the top-selling artists of all time. 
And they clearly fall within this category, in my opinion and the opinions of others. And as I've mentioned before, I ended up finding out in adulthood that I had a biological father that uh, I was not familiar with. And it broke my heart to find out that he was the singer and a guitar player and sometimes keyboard player in an Eagles tribute band. I have a lifelong aversion to that band, to their entire catalog. So again, I'm sorry, listeners. I don't do with the Eagles. I'm not saying I've never liked any of their songs. That would be unfair to say. But I dislike more of their songs than I like. And I think everyone knows their catalog at this point. They're not for me. Joe Walsh stuff, right on. Timothy B. Schmidt, get the hell out of here. I mean, I have respect for like Glenn Fry. I just never really liked Don Henley. You know, I've mentioned on one of the episodes of Summer Songs that, you know, if I'm going to listen to Boys of Summer, I, I listen to the Atari's version. I mean, no offense to Don. I mean, it's arbitrary. It's his song. It's a big hit, but just not a big fan. Not a big fan. Nor am I a big fan of the next band. And uh, Carlos and I, I think, talked about this. Chicago. <sighs> Peter Cetera creeps me out. Peter Cetera's voice, his tone, all of it. I just... He's an amazing singer. He's a great writer and a musician. All of it. Oh, man, I just don't dig it. I, I do like that song with Amy Grant. He did that song with Amy Grant. I like that. But they had the, you know, first number one hit is uh, If You Leave Me Now, 1976. And then again, uh, number one, Hard to Say I'm Sorry in 1982. I mean, Hard to Say I'm Sorry, I could probably more listen to and be like, okay with it if it came on only because I remember it when it was brand new, but yeah, Chicago, the Peter Cetera, I can't do it. Like they had that song, Look Away, I think after Peter Cetera had left the band. It's okay, it's listenable, but just as a group, no. And I do know that like my mom and dad, like, you know, obviously they got divorced, but like a Chicago song was their song, like one of the like late 60s Chicago songs. I forget what it was called. Something my love, color my love, I don't know, some stuff, but ugh. So here's one where I've I've heard the name, and I've heard the songs too, but for some reason I never put two and two together. Until like I do research or I, you know, put on a song. And I, this is one artist that one of the songs on here I love. The other stuff I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah. but Here's a guy who I think is one of the poster children for the era of Yacht Rock. Dan Fogelberg. Now, the song Longer, 1979, excellent. But like Leader of the Band, 1981, meh. It's okay. You know what I mean? But yeah, Dan Fogelberg. This is his era. This is his era. This is like he is, uh, yeah, he's a poster child of, of Yacht Rock. And what's so crazy is that a lot of these guys, but not all of them, were quite her suit. A lot of hair, mustaches, beards. Yeah, really strange time. Man. Now, here's the section where it's just, it's curious to me. Where they talk about how the genre of Yacht Rock encompasses really many other genres. And here's a section that I consider... To be hard rock. But then when you do really think about it. And think about some of the. The melodies. And the, the instrumentation. And you put it in the context of the time and the place. And the people who may be listening to it. You go. Oh, man. Yeah I guess it is. So first right off the bat. We have a super group. We're talking about Toto. I'm going to get names mangled, okay? David Page, Jeff Beccaro on drums, um, David Hungate on bass, Steve Lukather, Steve Beccaro, uh, Bobby Kimball. They were all members of other bands, including Seals and Croft, 
uh, Sonny and Cher. Um, they did a lot of different stuff. But these guys, they were accomplished musicians. They all get together. And right out of the gate, and this is what I think people say that session artists are session uh, you know, musicians for a reason, and they can't do it all themselves, like to actually form a band. They came right out of the gate. 1978, Hold the Line, hit song. Hold the Line, Love Isn't Always on Time. It's so good. And then they had the Rosanna in Africa in 1981. And they're still playing. And Steve Lukather is considered like a guitar god, but probably completely underappreciated. So Toto, I mean, they're not sweet, smooth sounds of the 70s. Like they're a rock band, but they do lean into some of the smoother stuff, like a song like Africa. Like, I can't say that Africa isn't yacht rock. It is. I think Hold the Line is definitely more rocking, but even Rosanna, like that whole era... It's pretty sweet. It's pretty saccharine. It's still freaking great, though. And I think the same has to be said for Ario Speedwagon. You know, their classic lineup, you know, Kevin Cronin, uh, Gary Ritrath, uh, Neil Doughty, uh, 1980, come out with Keep on Loving You, Take It on the Run. Then, you know, 1984, Can't Fight This Feeling. I mean, this is a band that could lean into the, the rockin' stuff. But, I mean... Yeah. I don't know. It's pretty. It's almost milk toast, even though it has such energy to it. You know, like the way keep on loving you builds up. You know what I mean? Or take it on the run. That whole opening lyric, you know, um, heard it from a friend who heard it from another. You were messing around. It's good stuff. It's rock music. Like proper rock music, but it it does it like who's the demographic at that time, right? Nineteen eighty. Let's say you're in high school in nineteen eighty. I mean, this is right up your alley, right? I mean, it's crazy to think that within a couple of years. Well, actually, technically, Metallica I think was already playing at this time, right? A band like Metallica is out there starting to cut their teeth playing in their very earliest bands. And by 1982, music is moving. Just so curious. Like, where'd that switch happen? But again, you go from your Toto to your Ario Speedwagon to Supertramp. Roger Hodgson, Rick Davis, Davies, excuse me. Um, Give a Little Bit came out in 1977. Give a Little Bit is a fantastic freaking song. Then in 1979, you had Take the Long Way Home, the logical song, Breakfast in America, Again, they're a proper rock band. They're they're a, a prog rock band. Yet yeah, these songs that became big hits, like like the logical song, the way that it breaks. I mean, it's just the 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 upswell at like the bridge into the chorus. It just I can just see someone out on their yacht or just tooling around in like I don't know. What were they driving at the time? Someone who was driving a yacht. What were they driving? I don't know. Volkswagen? Volvo? I don't know. You tell me. What Do you know people from this? Some of you know. Some of you, the early Xers, you're in your teens at this point. Good grief. Supertramp. Gotta love it, though. Like So to me, Toto, Ario Speedwagon, and Supertramp are interesting in their inclusion on this particular list. Because that's just some good rock and roll. Now, here's where I was most surprised as I was going through different songs. So, again, one of the the, the card-carrying members of the Yacht Rock Club, Jimmy Eugene Seals and Daryl George, also known as Dash Crofts. Everyone knows Summer Breeze. Makes me feel fine. And they have Diamond Girl. But then, get closer. Holy shit. That is a good song. Like, so good. I think, like, the vocals, I don't know. Like, you can hear really what the influence was. It really was R&B. It was Motown. And it was Blue-Eyed Soul. 
And that was really more of the vibe and the feel for much of it. But, um, yeah, I, I said to my wife, I'm like, you know, I really like Seals and Croft, so I guess I need to listen to more of their discography because I am i don't get that negative feeling when I listen to them. You know what I mean? It makes me feel fine. See what I did there? So I, I don't want to forget Christopher Cross, but, man, he gives me a bad feeling. Like sailing? Oh, gosh, Christopher Cross is just awful. So as much as I love Seals and Crofts, good God, Christopher Cross is just the worst. The worst. And like he's playing this music and he's got this like crazy double neck guitar. And like the dude is playing, like, why do you need all that? Maybe there's rock and stuff that I'm unaware of that he does. But man, that guy, that guy was old when he was young. Do you know what I mean? He looked about 90 years old. Okay, I'm exaggerating. He looked like 40 when he was like 20. But this whole what is included and what isn't when we start getting into the Blue-Eyed Soul stuff, right? Because one of the groups that's on this list, I was like, how do you say that? Hall and Oates. To me, that is controversial. So, like, their first big hit was Rich Girl, 1977. Kiss is on my list in 80. 1981, you had Private Eyes, I Can't Go For That. You had Man Eater in 1982 and Out of Touch in 1984. Now, certainly they were definitely uh, more entrenched in, in the actual Motown style and soul earlier on and then did get into that 80s phase. But I'm having a hard time reconciling the fact that on the one hand, okay, no, Hall of Notes is something unique completely unto themselves. And having a hard time kind of disqualifying them from being in this subgenre, this micro category. Because come on, out of touch. I can't go for that. Oof. It, it kind of fits, right? I don't know. That's a hard one because they're actually so good. If you can, I think the episodes are still available, but I loved watching uh, at Daryl's house where he would just go ahead and have people over his actual home and they would play music out in his barn. It's a very good show. I think I mentioned it before, but Daryl Hall, he's one of the great singers. Just ask him. That's a Daryl Hall has an ego joke that has been said many, many times, but if these arbitrary assigners of the genre place this label on Hall and Oates, how come Huey Lewis isn't on that list? Is, is Huey Lewis more generally actually rock? Because you know who else they've included on the list? Robert, Robert Palmer. Now, I would say that Robert Palmer, that's harder to say than I thought. Robert Palmer... And Huey Lewis are very similar in a lot of ways. But then they have like Steve Winwood, who is on the list. <laughs> now, that higher love era Steve Winwood, I mean, I get it. But you're not going to say traffic era. It's weird. But then get this. Spandau Ballet is on the list, but not ABC. I would I would put ABC on the list in a minute if I'm including Spandau Ballet, right? And if those of you who don't remember ABC, you got the look of love. Oh, oh, oh. She's got the look. If you haven't heard it in a minute, go listen to it. Watch the video. You will actually ask yourself, what did I just watch? Do I have a fever? Am, am I having hallucinations? It is insane. Go check it out. So then, I told you how having a nice, lovely meal with one of my dear wife's good friends. And she told me I was full of shit because I said I hadn't heard a song. The guy for whom this genre exists. I had never heard the song. Margaritaville. Now, some of you right now might be saying, bullshit, just like she did. 
listen to the names of these songs. Margaritaville, Changes in Latitudes, Changes in Attitudes, and Cheeseburger in Paradise. I will tell you that with my parents, as different as they might have been in their musical tastes, they didn't have a lot of um a lot of room for parody and and some of you might now go no jimmy buffett isn't parody well, then what is it comedy because they wouldn't have listened to something called cheeseburger in paradise i don't think and maybe i'm wrong they never played jimmy buffett my parents Never played Jimmy Buffett. And so much of my musical background and history comes from my parents being music listeners. This guy wasn't on my radar. And I realized that I would bust balls about Jimmy Buffett to people like even in high school without knowing the guy's catalog at all because this is nothing I'm interested in. At this point, there's one song that he has, and let's see here. Um, Hold on. I'm going to find this. Give me just one second. Okay, so the song that I am thinking of is Southern Cross. Um, I think that's the only song of his that I know well enough and like go, oh, well, that's a good song. Cause it's got like a good, like guitar, like driven rock. But like the rest of that discography is just not interesting. You know what I mean? So the people who love Buffett and like some people will say going to a Buffett concert is like awesome. It's like a big event. And I, and I get that. I do. I get it. It's just that's not something I was ever exposed to or really wanted to be exposed to. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just kind of lame. But then, like, you know, what's what's missing from here? Like, what is, you know, who are the big bands other than the ones that I've mentioned? Because when you go to the list, you go, hmm, that seems out of place. Um, Like the Michael Jackson thing. I think that's strange. Like, here are some of the artists that they consider. They, whoever they are. Like, Airplay. But they don't have Air Supply, right? Isn't Air Supply someone that you would put on the list? They have Loggins and Messina or Kenny Loggins. Okay. Maybe, but I kind of put them in the same, you know, category as the the Huey Lewis's and the, well, I guess not. Mom, don't dance. It's hard to say a group like America, you know, they've been through the desert on a horse with no name. Right. And I need you. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Snooze fest. Uh, Average white band. Um, Eric Carmen. Like, I don't know if I would put Eric Carmen on there. You know, hungry eyes. Maybe Crosby, Sills and Nash, though. No way. I mean, that's just folk. That's just folk rock from the 60s. That's that's straight up hippie. Like, what do you mean? How do you have them on the list? Dr. Hook, I can see that. Like the Doobie Brothers and Michael. So I would say the Doobie Brothers, yes. Uh, no, excuse me. The Doobie Brothers, I'd say no. But Michael McDonald as a solo artist, I would say yes. Right? Does that make sense? You know, Fleetwood Mac is not on here and they shouldn't be. Right? Or they're they're actually listed on this one, even though the article says they're not. Um, let's see, Al Jarreau. I mean, seriously, the guy is like a legend, and he's on the Yacht Rock list. The Pointer Sisters. How are the Pointer Sisters on this list? Makes no sense to me. Um, Little River Band. Okay, uh, cool in the gang. Shaka Khan. Now you're just making stuff up. You know what I mean? This is that whole. It's arbitrary. Like Lee Rittenauer, great jazz player. He's on the list. And then they have this Yacht Soul category. Yacht Soul. Not kidding. Peebo Bryson. Okay. 
But Elda Barge? Minnie Ripperton. Oh, whew. that's tough. I'd probably put Minnie Ripperton. Oh, Sade. Oh, but I love Sade. But see, I focus on the Yacht Rock, so this Yacht Soul could be a whole episode in itself. Because Sade, I can get how could be thematically, or even if you made a playlist, mixed in with your, you know, your Seals and your Crofts and, you know, uh, Hall of Notes, if you will. Um, the Gap Band, meh. But Earth, Wind, and Fire? Ah, no, that, no. That's like funk and soul. I, yeah. This 80s, like late 70s, 80s era Stevie Wonder, I just called to say I love you, Stevie Wonder. I get it. I totally get it. I understand why it would be on there. Same thing with Jeffrey Osborne. I get that too. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting category. And one that I can say as a, as a musical genre, I could not give you my essentials playlist. I did that very easily for hair bands. I could give you my, you know, top 20 favorite rock albums. But I really couldn't whittle down the yacht rock artists and their music and have a definitive here are the ones other than just obviously the most glaring ones that are kind of universally recognized. So anyway, what do you think? Do you love, do you love yacht rock? Do you hate it? Do you hear the term and go stupid? Or do you listen to all this music? And think it's great. Do you go see them in concert, these groups? I bet you some of you do. I bet you some of you go and see the Eagles every chance that you get. And Jimmy Buffett. I would love to see Hollow Notes, not going to lie. And I don't know if Seals and Crofts are still alive, but if they're still playing, I'd go see them tomorrow. Doobie Brothers, Michael McDonald, hell yeah. Sign me up. I'm there. Um... I'm not seeing Buffett anytime soon. No, thank you. And unfortunately, you know, Captain Tennille, uh, that's uh, no longer possible. Uh, the captain died in 2019. Um, I'd love to see Huey Lewis. I think it'd be a great show. I think REO Speedwagon still tours. I know that Toto still tours. Um, I would love to see Toto. Now I want to go see, is, is Dan Fogelberg still alive? Because now you, Dan Fogelberg... Oh, that's going to say he's dead or something. I'm going to be all bummed. Oh, he died in 2007, but I've only just found you, Dan. Oh, Dan. Daniel Grayling Fogelberg. Ah. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Ah, oh, age 56. That's too freaking young. Cancer. Oh, fuck, there's my... There's my F-bomb. Fuck cancer. All right. Well, who do you love? Who do you hate? Who do you miss? Who would you put on your definitive list of yacht rockers? What do you think? Let me know. How do you let me know? Oh, I got, I, hold on. I got to get into my <clears throat> soft rock DJ voice. <clears throat> So how do you let me know? You can email me at stuck in the middle pod at yahoo.com. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at stuck pod X. You can head on over to the Facebook page stuck in the middle of Gen X podcast. Please like comment, share, leave five star reviews. And most importantly, please subscribe to the podcast so until next time later slackers